For more than a year, Malcolm Stewart wore a bulletproof vest 24 hours a day. He wasn't a soldier or policeman. He was a mechanic, afraid of his wife, with very good reason. Malcolm, when am I unhappy? When the work isn't done. It's unforgivable what she's done to me. Unforgivable. I go ballistic when the work isn't done. And she said, and I'm going to cut your throat. How much do you have to hate your husband to conspire to kill him? I was terrified. Uh, it's a nightmare. It's like a blur. Do you have any sympathy for what Malcolm's been through? I had to wear this bulletproof vest 24-7. I never took it off. I've been flying for 26 years. This is Teresa Dalton as the polite, well-spoken air hostess. It was exceedingly threatening, yes. Mm. Well, they got Which, that. of course, gave us more courage they to persist. But this is the other side of her. Let's have a shower! Let's go and freshen up! The deranged side that Malcolm Stewart lived with for 25 years. That's what we'll do. We'll cut our shots. It must have been like you were almost married to two different people. Absolutely. I was, and I was scared. Tonight, for the first time, Malcolm Stewart can tell his story about the air hostess who hired a hitman to have him killed. And she'll go to any extreme for greed, even take someone's life. Despite the pain Teresa Dalton's caused, Malcolm Stewart hasn't let go of these. The glamorous newlyweds moved into Happy Manor, a waterfront home on the Gold Coast, and with a baby daughter arriving, life with Teresa was almost perfect. And she really excelled on the good side. The other side, no one knows anything about it. It's another side that's evil. Absolutely, 100% evil. This is Sunday, the uh, 9th of May, 1999. These never-before-seen videos were filmed by Malcolm inside their family home 20 years ago. This is not the way to live. He wanted to capture what life was like living with Teresa. Can I just go and make the bed? No. Sure, sure. No, Malcolm, you can't. You have to sit here for the next three hours and not move, except to go to the toilet. Teresa is a control freak. I wouldn't have done that, but anyway, you've done it. Controlling was one thing. Her outbursts were something else. All right, then let's cut out some shapes. We'll cut out shapes. That's what we'll do. We'll cut out shapes. We don't have to cut out shapes. We've got, we've got some shapes to cut out. It's not funny. And if there was a rage happening in the house and the phone rang, she would control herself and answer that phone in a normal manner. Thank you, darling. Malcolm says even the most simple things could set her off. And she'd throw a basket load of washing at me and tell me to fold it. And I said, Terry, just give me a minute, please. I just want to watch the news. I've been working all day. I said, I'll fold the washing after. She wasn't happy with that. He says that sparked a fit of rage, targeting his brand new car. She went out and ran a knife right around the side, across the bonnet, the roof, kicked the doors in, kicked the sail gate in. That was all over a load of washing. Correct. Malcolm, when am I unhappy? When the work isn't done. I go ballistic when the work isn't done. My life is a misery when the work isn't done. Life with Teresa was volatile. Malcolm says he never knew what to expect next. And all of a sudden she started slamming the oven door and uh, slammed it probably 30 times. And every, every time was getting harder and harder and the door exploded and the glass went all over the kitchen. How did you feel when you'd see these violent outbursts? I found the best way was to escape, to just leave the house and come back once you cool down. Malcolm remembers the day he finally left the family home like it was yesterday. The relationship was at breaking point after police had been called to the property two days earlier following a Teresa outburst. I lay down on the bed and I left the light on in the bathroom because I felt better to do that. They were sleeping in different rooms when Teresa appeared at the doorway saying... It's curtains for you. I'm going to turn that light off and come in and cut your throat. I was terrified, and uh, not only that, I knew she'd be capable of doing it. You knew it wasn't an idle threat? 
No, definitely not. Malcolm called police but chose not to press charges, mainly because the pair were booked for marriage counselling the next day. It failed, and two weeks later, Teresa delivered another chilling threat, this time at Malcolm's workshop. She came in here with no warning, opened the door and said to me, I'm going to uh, mentally destroy you, I'm going to financially destroy you, and then I'm going to have you killed. Soon after, their now 18-year-old daughter dropped another bombshell. Dad, there's something I have to tell you. Uh, yeah, what's that? She said, Mum's been having an affair with Tony Werner for the last 12 months. Anthony, or Tony Werner, was Teresa Dalton's new boyfriend and the man she tasked with finding someone to kill Malcolm Stewart. With a messy divorce playing out, Malcolm's lawyer placed a caveat over the house they had shared to prevent Teresa selling it. Werner would later tell a criminal court that caveat made Teresa explode. She just said Malcolm's got to go. She wanted to get rid of him. She didn't want to share the assets they owned. Two weeks after the caveat was taken out, Teresa started withdrawing large sums of cash from her bank account. Five transactions of $9,000 each over eight days, all up 45 grand. Now Werner just needed to find a hitman, and he found Matthew Neils. Neils agreed to kill Malcolm Stewart for 20,000 up front and another 20 grand after it was done. Teresa counted out the money on her bed wearing gloves placed it in a silver party bag and handed it to Anthony Werner to give to Niels. It turned out Matthew Niels was a thief, not a hitman. He took the 20 grand and instead of murdering Malcolm, he rang him with this dire warning. He said, I just thought I'd ring you and let you know that Anthony Werner is going to kill you. I'm just ringing to warn you, get out of the hell out of where you are because you're going to die. Malcolm was now terrified. He also received warnings from police, offering to place him in witness protection, changing his name and therefore losing his mechanics business. I'd lost enough and I thought, if I'm going to lose my business for Teresa, that's the end of everything. And I chose to get the bulletproof vest and just live through the rough ride that I had. So for the next 14 months, he wore a bulletproof vest like this one to save his life. I never took it off. I wore it 24-7. I used to wear it at night. The only time I took it off was when I had a shower and then I'd put it back on straight after I'd had a shower. So you'd even sleep in it? Correct. Malcolm started noticing strange cars sitting outside his workshop, following him when he left. I had eyes in the back of my head every day. I, uh, I had to pull the curtains in the house. I couldn't have the place open because I feared of a drive-by shooting. Malcolm became paranoid beyond belief. The fear was destroying him mentally until finally a lucky break. <laughs> Teresa Dalton's undoing began in the most bizarre fashion, a random act that happened 1,000 kilometres away in Wollongong. Someone fired a bullet at the house of Matthew Neils, the hired hitman. When police asked who might want to harm him, the story of Anthony Werner's murder plot unravelled. Niels had kept the picture of Malcolm he was given and it contained a fingerprint belonging to Werner. Anthony Werner pleaded guilty to soliciting murder in a New South Wales court and served four years in jail. But he told police he only did it at Teresa Dalton's request, making him the star witness at her trial here at the Brisbane Supreme Court. Teresa Dalton had always been comfortable in front of a camera. She once appeared on a current affair in an age discrimination case against Virgin. And I thought it was a meat raffle. That's all it was, it was purely a meat raffle. But emerging from a committal hearing for her murder plot, a once bubbly air hostess had little to say. Excuse Hi me. Teresa, Dan Nolan from A Current Affair. Just wanting to know why you wanted your husband to disappear. What did he do to deserve this? It's about as extreme as it gets, isn't it? And seemingly didn't care for what Malcolm had been enduring. 
What about Malcolm? What do you, you think he did to deserve this? What would you say to Malcolm now? Do you have any sympathy for what Malcolm's been through? Malcolm had to appear at her trial as a witness and finally got to hear the exact details of the murder plot against him. How did it feel seeing the men who were tasked with killing you? It was a shock. It was a shock and I, and, uh, I, I sort of realised the scum that she'd been involved with. How does a flight attendant end up mixing with hitmen? Despite the charge she was facing, Teresa even managed to find herself a new man. I don't know whether you're incredibly brave or incredibly stupid is the question. Her exes don't have a very good history. One had a hit put out on him and the other ended up in jail. Teresa seemed to find that funny, but the now 67-year-old grandmother's offending was no laughing matter for a jury who took just a few hours to find her guilty of attempting to commission Malcolm's murder. When you heard that word guilty, what went through your mind? A huge sigh of relief because uh, Teresa right throughout her life has got away with everything. Teflon Terry, nothing sticks. When Teresa Dalton heard the verdict, she never flinched, telling the judge she had nothing to do with this before being led away to prison. No emotion whatsoever and uh, I feel as though she's got something wrong with her and I, I feel sorry for her. I do. Malcolm Stewart survived the murder plot, but at a great cost. She's destroyed me mentally, financially, and my health has deteriorated very, very fast. The 64-year-old hopes Teresa Dalton gets a long prison sentence, but also that he can rekindle his relationship with their only daughter, who he hasn't seen or spoken to in almost 10 years. I just hope my own flesh and blood Maybe we can talk again one day before I die. Malcolm is safe from Teresa Dalton but now has kidney failure. Teresa will be sentenced in April.